Uh, Rob, I just wonder how what you saw tonight impacts your thinking ahead of Tuesday. And uh, was Kiefer Moore coming off at half time to keep him fresh for Tuesday as well? Yeah, he's, he's struggled a little bit with his heels, but um, yeah, uh, it was always the plan. Give him 45 minutes, give Hal 45 minutes, and then uh, he gives us fresh legs then for Tuesday as well. well. The overall performance tonight, I mean, does it impact the thinking for Tuesday? Well, it, it's done us no harm whatsoever. I'm really proud of that group of players. You know, we, we've said we've got a big squad. We picked a big squad. Yes, we've had injuries. Potentially, we might have people to come back in like James Lawrence. And I'll, I'll speak about that later on. But um, yeah, they've done themselves no harm whatsoever. You know, there's a group of players that have got to be selected for the Euros in this summer. And that and that team that we picked tonight was with one eye on Tuesday's game. But um, like I said, they've, they've given a great account of themselves tonight. And I'm really, really proud of every one of them. Particularly given the calibre of opposition you're facing and their record as well, what second defeat in, in 23 games? Yeah, it's unbelievable. When we looked at the stats before, it was a little bit uh, scary going into the game. But like I said, we know we said in the change room before. Yeah, we'll respect the opposition and the record they've got and what they've you know what they've got in the change room and, and how they go about their work. But we've also got good players in that in that change room as well, and we proved that tonight. Defensively, I thought they were excellent. I thought they uh, I thought we defended really really well as a, as a team. And then, you know, on the break, I thought we caught them at, uh, at good opportunities through the game. A word about Chris Gunter as well, obviously receiving his 100th cap tonight and, and just what an achievement it is for him, really. Yeah, I've said, I've said all week, you know, he's a model professional, he absolutely is. And these young players coming into the squad need to, need to take note of, of why he's got his 100th cap. You don't fluke that, you know, you do it for a reason. And uh, he's a model professional, he trains as he plays, he's great around the place. Um, Great work ethic and great for the young lads to see how he's, how he's achieved that and great for them to be a part of that tonight and I'm so pleased for him. Nice scenes at the end where he was pictured with uh, Wayne Hennessy and Gareth Bale as well, obviously uh, teammates for a, for a long while now. Yeah, absolutely. And the reception he's got in the changing room after was, was unbelievable, quite emotional actually. And he gave a lovely speech to the players. And uh, and you know and and just reiterated how, how important it is to play for his country and what a and what a change in him he's been involved in over the last few years. So um, a really special moment for him and, and like I said and his family and I'm and I'm really pleased for him. Just finally for me, uh, I think a few of us were surprised maybe to see Gareth Bale coming on for those last ten minutes. What was the thinking? Well, Rabi went down. The, the boys put such a shift in. You know, there was a few. Uh, Johnny got cramp. Rabi. You know, these boys as well are not playing. They're not playing week in, week out. You know, you can go through all the players, even from last week. You know, there's a lot of players in the squad at the minute that aren't playing competitive football every week. So we had to manage the minutes. And, uh, and yeah, it was the right thing to do to put Baylor on for 10, 15 minutes. Top man, well done tonight. Thank you. OK, um, David Pritchard. Hi, Rob. Congrats on the win. Uh, you mentioned those Thank emotional you. scenes in the changing room with Chris. Yeah. Yeah, can you give us a flavour of that speech and you know, his achievement and just the esteem that he's held in uh, by his teammates? Yeah, he's got a lot of respect in that changing room, as you can imagine. Like I said, you know, he's, um, for what he's done for his country, for what he's done for the Welsh supporters, he's rightly so getting all the, um, the accolades he deserves. And, uh, and I've said to the younger players, you know, to look at him, you know, why he's got 100 caps, why he's still playing at a good level. And, um, and yeah, the this, this speech was quite emotional at the end because he was, uh, you know, I, I just mentioned it in the, in the, the chat at the end, the importance of the, the result for, for Chris as well. And, uh, and he just said, you know, to be part of the Welsh setup over the last few years has been a, an honour for him. And, uh, and everybody agreed, you know, and, and they gave him a great round of applause and, and celebrated with him. So that was a lovely moment. And I know Chris is the kind of person who, in his own words, doesn't like to make a fuss. Um, do you have anything planned when you get back to the hotel? Anything to mark the occasion? Anything like that? Well, we'll have a chat with the staff now. I'm sure there'll be, I'm sure there'll be a, a presentation of, of some sort. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll make sure there's a, a special moment from you. And just from the, the game's perspective as well, how pleasing is it that you can start building this depth? Because that's maybe a question mark that's been over... Wales in, in recent years. Uh, does a performance like this yeah. encourage you that you are creating that depth? Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, we, we mentioned at the start of the camp that it's a big camp for many reasons. You know, you've got World Cup qualifiers, but you've got a friendly in between. And we knew coming into it that we'd have to change the team. Obviously, the two qualifiers are the most important thing for us. And, uh, and they've done themselves absolutely no harm tonight, that group of players, because they've gone out and uh, 
and 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 we've had to take note of their performance, and and that will play a factor now in in what we do for the summer and the Euros. And just finally, for me, you mentioned Kiefer Moore at the start, and just to clarify in terms of his substitution and not starting uh, in Belgium, uh, was that to rest him uh, in Belgium? How was he fitness wise? No, like I've said before, it's, it's horses for courses. It's horses for courses. You know, we we you know if if you're playing against a, a big physical centre off, then it might not be. Uh, the best option to play Kiefer, you know, so it's horses for courses. We've got, like you just alluded to, we've got strength in depth now and, uh, and we've got a different type of threat that we'll, that we'll have a look at, assess what we're up against in the opposition and, and pick accordingly. So the good thing is now we've got players scoring goals, playing well, um, and it's, it's difficult decisions to be had, but it's, it's good, difficult decisions to have as a coach and a manager. Thanks, Rob. Pleasure. OK, we'll go to Lauren Smora. Hi, Rob. Congratulations. Um, does that performance by Chris show that he's still got a lot to give this, um, this squad on the pitch as well as off it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. You know, he's, um, you know we're, we're talking about him as, a, as what he does off the pitch and as, as he trains. But when he gives performances like that, of course, you know, he's, um, he's still got games left in him. Absolutely. So, yes, this is 100th, but, you know, there might, be, uh, there might be a few more to come yet as well. I'm not sure if you've seen the result, but the Czech Republic have drawn 1-1 with Belgium this evening. So I just want to get your reaction to that, really. Yeah, well, it's a great result for us, of course. But um, we'd be going into Tuesday's game with wanting to get the win anyway. So irrespective of what other results happen, you know, it's about us winning games of football and that won't change our approach to the game Tuesday. But of course, you know, that, that for us, we did have a look at it and that was the perfect result, really. And just finally for me, Matt Smith in the middle of midfield, that move to Doncaster seems to have done him the world of good. He looked terrific tonight. Yeah, and that's the message we give to all our young players. You know, they need to be out playing competitive football. And Matt's a great example of that. The loan last season didn't work out for him. He got called back by Man City, he sent out to Doncaster. I've seen him probably three times in the last month. And, and he's given performances of like that week in, week out. And also for Dylan Levitt. Dylan Levitt's gone out and, and played competitive football. And, uh, and it certainly worked for him as well. And I thought the two in the middle of the park tonight against experience, there's a lot of caps in the middle of the park for them tonight against a top 10, you know, uh, team. And... Uh, and I thought they were magnificent. But all the players, I can't just sing, single sort of one or two out. I think all the, I thought all the players tonight uh, give a massive performance and really proud of them. Okay, Bill Horans and Tom Clomossi. Hi, Rob. Hi. It was quite a feisty game for a friendly. How pleased were you with your players being able to keep their cool and thinking particularly of yeah. Tabango who has had a lot of chat with Lozano throughout the game yeah it's all part of the game isn't it they try to get in under your skin a little bit and, uh, and get you to retaliate we, you know I mentioned it before certainly mentioned it half time having, having seen what they were up to first half you know they were prepared to dish it out but didn't like it back um, and I just said don't get involved you know to win the game we need 11 players on the pitch um, and keep it disciplined and, and, and again, I was really pleased with that aspect of it because at any time they could have, they could have sort of retaliated and, uh, and, and, and got involved, but they didn't. We showed good discipline and, and that really pleased me. Finally, for me, I don't know if I misheard you at the start. Did you say you might have James Lawrence with you? With the well, it's difficult. it's difficult. We've got, the, we've got the German FA on our side. We've got FIFA on our side. We just need the club to release him. So, you know, we're, 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 still, we're still in dialogue with the club. And, uh, and we're trying to get him back involved in the, in the, in the group with the group. So um, that'll be something that we'll, we'll be doing again overnight. But it's just a, a, a case of, you know, the club release, re, releasing him. And they don't want to release him because of the restrictions, is that right? No, well, we're, we're protected. We're absolutely protected by that. Like I said, the German FA have got absolutely no issues with it. Um, you know, and, and FIFA have said, yeah, absolutely, he can come. So, yeah, we... Um, there's no reason why we shouldn't have him in, so we're in dialogue with the club now to get him involved. Thank you. Okay, Phil Patton. Uh, hi, Rob. Um, congratulations hi, on the win. Can I Thank just you. follow up on that point? How, how long yeah. could it go before you could genuinely bring in James? Would you give it as long as Monday? No, we, well, we want it done ASAP. We want it done tomorrow morning, so we'll... Um, We'll pursue it. We'll keep on to it. And like I said, everybody's backing us. So we need, uh, we just need the dialogue with the club again now and, and we'll speak to James and, and see how quick we can get him in. If it's Monday, it's Monday. But ideally, we want him, you know, we're, we're on the pitch again tomorrow and we're all 
you know, planning has started already for Tuesday's game and we're on the pitch ready to ready to train tomorrow and wanting to be part of that. And, and just finally, with Kiefer Moore's record at international football, is he becoming too hard to leave out at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. You're scoring goals, you're going you're gonna to take note, note of him. You know, he's a different type of threat. And I, I thought he was excellent tonight. You know, he didn't get a lot of protection first half. I thought they were quite physical. And, uh, you know, the, the one sitting midfielder in front of him trying to make it difficult as well as one coming from behind. And I thought he competed really well, as did Hal when he came on at half time. So, um, yeah, competition for places is what you want as a coach and a manager. So that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's, you know, refreshing to have. It's good. And could he be actually really vital defensively with, with the Czech Republic having the aerial threat of Suchet? Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's something we do look into as well from a defensive point of view. He is a, he is a big asset to have in your team, you know. So, um, yeah, there'll be many reasons why we, uh, why we pick a team on Tuesday and we'll, and we'll take all those factors into account. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. OK, we'll take a final question from Sam Dean. Hi, Rob. Sorry, just a really quick one on James Lawrence again. Where is he now? Has he gone back to Germany or is he still in Wales? Well, yeah, he had to go back after the Belgium game. He had to go back. Um, he couldn't, he, the government at the time wouldn't allow him to come into the UK. Uh, restrictions have, have eased now. And, uh, and this should be no different now to what it was before Belgium. So, like I said, we're, we're protected by FIFA. We're, um, the German FA have, uh, have backed us. So, we just need the club now to give us the nod and, and get him over.